Uh, I'm going to do a, a segment right here. I'm going to do some conspiracy cleanup and paranormal cleanup on what I have been seeing in the world as of late, or at least in the past few days. I have a few articles here that I have procured for your listening enjoyment, Joe and Clown Baby. Okay. Now, I have an art- article here titled, Did Aliens Interfere in the Vietnam War? Soldiers give shocking account of such. Okay. Would you like to hear some accounts of uh, that might shock you? Definitely. Okay, great. Absolutely. Because there were um, there were stories of the Foo Fighters in World War II. In 2009, so. I was on vacation uh, with my partner. Oh, no. Staying in... This is uh, another uh, thing on that very page. But, as we all like to know, web pages like to autoplay video at this point. Many Vietnam War veterans have come forward since the fierce fighting officially ended in 1975, including high-ranking military officials claiming to have spotted UFOs of alien origin. The most reputable claimer is Captain George Filer III, who worked for the U.S. Secret Service in Vietnam, who says he saw a UFO interacting with U.S. jets. He claimed, one of our planes flew about 500 knots, and suddenly a UFO appeared and circled the aircraft several times before it flew off at three times the speed of our Air Force jets. It's a technology that is far superior to ours. Since his retirement from the military and with his experience in UFO sightings, Captain Filer, or I'm sorry, yeah, Captain Filer dedicated his life to extraterrestrial activity running a website, National UFO Center. But, the Cap- but Captain Filer is not the only person to have seen UFOs that are not of this earth during the ill-fated Vietnam War. Why did, they call, why, did the, why did the article have to you know put that little jab in there, the ill-fated Vietnam War? I don't know. They had to provide some editorialization there, or editorializing. Uh, Pete Mazzola, who served in the Vietnam War from 1965 to the end of the decade, said before his death in 1987 that he saw UFOs during the conflict. He said, there were several times while on patrol in the jungle that I had a time, I had time to look up at the stars. I saw more than a few unusual shooting stars that maneuvered in a way no meteor could. In one incident, he and his squad saw a UFO hovering over a paddy field in palm trees where they are pinned down. He said, I could not believe what I saw. The other guys saw it too, but afterwards, we were too shocked to talk about it much except to say, what the hell was that? Exactly. What the hell is this? Another witness says, George, General George S. Brown uh, is said to have alleged... I'm sorry. <clears throat> this is kind of a written in, in a weird way. Another witness... George, or General George S. Brown says the alleged UFO caused confusion among his allies. General Brown said, I do not know if the story was ever told. They were not called UFOs. They were labeled as enemy helicopters. They were seen at night and in certain places. Once they were observed in the early summer of 68, it triggered a small battle. We never found an enemy. We only found ourselves. But someone had fired and shot there. It was always the same. We could not identify the enemy, and yet we were reacting. Once we even damaged an Australian ship. And this is just uh, more accounts. Uh, goes goes on a little bit about uh, people uh, who have witnessed strange things in battle. And uh, there are some other accounts of, uh, of uh, soldiers that, uh, while they're in Vietnam, uh, even firing upon alien creatures. One even claiming to hit one. It's, it's it's kind of remarkable because these people are trained to observe and see threatening behaviors and an enemy and, and they're able to observe extraordinary things and report back. But you can only imagine if these guys are talking about it. How many people don't report it? You know, this does have a tie over with Bigfoot. I covered the rock apes of Vietnam that soldiers encountered during the Vietnam War. The rock ape, the rock apes of Vietnam. Yeah, yeah, I, I do remember that. And I, we, I think we, we may have even talked about a story of people in uh, soldiers, like a, a squad in Vietnam, yeah. firing upon 
um, uh, UFOs and aliens too, and just and those aliens just disappearing in front of their eyes. Bizarre shit. But these these stories that we that we just read right there, these are more of the classical kind of UFOs in the sky doing incredible maneuvers around military jets. Whoa, Joe, what's going on there? What's going on? Hey, can you? What do you hear? Children screaming. Children, you're molesting. Yes. Uh, I went out to the beach to go uh, shit. Look at the beach. Oh. I can go back into the room. That's fine. I mean, you can go shit on the beach if I'll you got shit. I'll mute it until I. I'll, I'll mute it until I talk. Okay. Um. Yeah. The the, the rock ape of Vietnam. Uh, very interesting stuff. And you know, typically when from what we've read, where you have UFO sightings, there's going to be some Sasquatch or or Bigfoot sightings as well. I I don't know why, but they they seem to go hand in hand a little bit for whatever reason. Do you know? You remember the exact article that you read, Clown Baby, about the the rock ape in Vietnam? Um, Maybe we can refine I that. Think it might have been weak and weird, or something off Mysterious Universe. Okay, yeah, we, we probably uh, have to. We can probably find that again and, and post that under um, under this clip because it might, you know, kind of directly relates. I, I mean, try and find it. We should try to also. What I'd like to do is find some additional stories from soldiers in different wars that have interesting experiences. Uh, paranormal UFO doesn't matter. I'll start researching that a little bit. Um, I'm I don't I don't know why they would have any more validity than a regular person, but there's something about when a soldier or veteran tells a story. There's almost an instant credibility to it because they're in a fucked up situation, and I don't know. I assume that they're not going to make up anything. Uh, supernatural or unreal because what they're experiencing is already incredible and unreal they're in a life and death situation do you really think they're gonna make up shit about ufos uh uh when they're at the end of their life on their deathbed i find that hard to believe maybe there are some people well, out they, there they they were doing a lot of acid in vietnam so true it, Smoking it could pot. be dwarves and leprechauns too so yeah, I you know um, that does happen. I've done a fair bit of ass in my day, and I've had some hallucinations. But I knew that they were hallucinations. I knew I could tell what was real and what wasn't, even though I was on acid. Maybe I didn't take enough acid. People, I'm looking for acid. Yeah, but to your point, I actually agree with you. Like there is some credibility just by default. Like even one of my favorite accounts, and I think we've talked about it on the show, was a pilot who was traveling to Japan. Uh, and and the, by the simple fact that he was a pilot, I think he was like a, like a commercial, you know, passenger jet pilot. And he was talking about this flying object that was kind of tailing him and moving around him and all this stuff. And it was like there was like recordings of this and it was documented. And somebody's getting a call. That was um, me. But yeah, there was it was there was a credibility lent to it just by the simple nature that there was this pilot. And like, why the fuck is this pilot saying this? And obviously, he would know about what flight kind of plat patterns are possible you would imagine so yeah uh, you definitely would imagine so uh i have another headline here to wrap up my uh ufo segment this one's titled the scientist that has proven alien ufos had have landed on earth and uh, this is all kind of wrapped around uh, a family that witnessed a ufo landing and the physical evidence left behind after that landing Dr. Errol Falk, or uh, okay, yeah, Dr. Errol Falk, F A R U K. How would you guys pronounce that last name? F A R U K Farouk. Yeah. For Farouk. Farouk, yeah, maybe. Farouk. Okay, Dr. Errol Farouk has published the findings of his investigation into a substance left on the ground after a famous UFO sighting in a book which has concluded extraterrestrial activity is the only explanation for this. In a self-published work, The Compelling Scientific Evidence of UFOs, the British-born chemist of Turkish heritage examined in detail the Du Bois UFO case in Kansas, USA, on the evening of November 2nd, 1971. The case has been kept fairly quiet from the public for what appears to be obvious reasons. It is considered by some 
alien investigators as one of the most compelling UFO cases on record due to the scorched ring left on the ground, apparently, when the UFO landed. Dr. Farouk has published the findings of his investigations into the substance left on the ground after the famous UFO sighting in a book which has concluded the extraterrestrial activity is the only explanation for this leftover sub- substance. Okay, although he remained unable to fully identify this soil compound, he claimed to detect a highly water-soluble organic compound which is potentially chemoluminescent, and this could have been responsible for the alleged glow seen at the time, he said. So this guy, this scientist, is concluding because of some stuff he found on the ground, basically slime material, slimer from Ghostbusters or something, uh, that aliens are here due to this uh, evidence. Now, I, I'm not sure if the, uh, the book is full of more investigations, but certainly this article is written about this one event. I don't know, Clown Baby, what do you think about this? Um, right, thanks. Uh, uh... Plausible? I don't know. <laughs> well, if you if you, um, if you look at some of the the Amazon reviews, I mean, this guy is self published. He's on Amazon, and um, ah. and so I mean, it, you can look at some of the reviews, and you can make your own decision. It is about uh, ten bucks, and I, I don't know if it's worth it for me. I do like the. I do like I do like the scientific investigations of this stuff. I like that they approached it in a in a scientific way, and that's why I like the black blackvault.com. It is a just a huge collection of UFO sightings. There's this basic data there, and you can make some assumptions about what's going on. And there is constant evaluation by scientists. There's there there's tests being done constantly on blackvault.com. So I don't know why this one. Um, it, it, I don't know. I read the article. It's not. He's saying it's conclusive proof of aliens landing. But why couldn't it be just a plasma ball generated by the atmosphere that touched down, left that ring, and it wasn't intelligently controlled? I, I don't know. Uh, we've seen things like ball lightning, and there's uh, been you know theories that it's just plasma balls generated naturally by the atmosphere of Earth. I don't, I don't. I don't know why UFOs are are, are drug into this uh, right away based on this guy's analysis. Why am I? Why am I the one being reasonable here? Why am I the one saying it's not aliens? I shouldn't. Yes. Of course, it's aliens. Please. I sh- I shouldn't be so measured and, and controlled. <laughs> I, sh- I should be out there sc- screaming, telling it to the I mountain never. that the aliens are coming. Here they are, landing never, down. They're leaving rings in the grass. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I think uh, Big, Bigfoot Bigfoot was deployed by the aliens to fight with the uh, with Charlie, and that's why it was so hard for the United States to win the war. They, they very well could be. I mean, the sighting the sighting in this okay. book was in 1971, so right around Vietnam era. I'm sorry, Clem, what did you say? I cut you off. That, tell, Joe, get closer to that family and say that line again. <laughs> I tried to find the spot furthest away from anybody who could hear me, but frankly, I just don't care. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, do they even understand you? I mean, you're just uh, an American talking an ugly, ugly language, language, right? <laughs> yes. Sure. Everybody here is uh, speaking multiple languages, and here I am. Yeah, you got any more of that booze? I'd like to drink some of it. I uh, I do have one more thing that kind of goes with the UFO thing, and that is, um, I should have played this during the Alex Jones segment, but this is uh, Trump to release secret technology to the public, and Alex Jones has been harping on this as well, is that the, the reason why the establishment wants to take down Trump is that he is going to release advanced technology. Trump is going to release advanced technology, and this is uh, Alex Jones talking about it a little bit. Is untouchable. No one is invincible. Yeah. No one's untouchable by other men, much less God. So where is he talking about this? And God is beginning to cut down the globalists like rats. Cut them down. I want to see what he's talking about technology. Do you understand that it's admitted in congressional hearings that they call it disruptive technologies, a 200 mile to the gallon 
carburetor they had 25 years ago. Hell, 40 years ago, they had a hundred and something mile. Solar panels that basically never break, never go out, and that have five times the gathering capacity of the very best systems today. Things like that. They're slowly doling out the technology. The elites are on incredible power trips, sequestering it for a breakaway civilization. The future's here. It's just not evenly distributed. And, Trump, and, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll play that. Trump intends to flood the entire planet with true globalism. With America as the operating system, the true America, not the modern liberal globalist eugenics America, but 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 really working with people, really uh, standing up for cultures that have good societies, crushing radical Islam. So, and he's proposing, Alex Jones is proposing that Trump is going to flood the market and release this secret technology to be used by the human race in order to have a more energy efficient, a more green uh, energy uh, economy. And this is disruptive technology. This is Star Trek technology is what he's talking about here. A little bit of Star Trek uh, where energy could be somewhat limitless. And it would release the hold that the oil companies have and, and, and the, the current power companies have and free it up a little bit. And if you had access, if, if energy costs dropped by, let's say, one fiftieth, like you're, you're instead of paying 60 bucks a month for your electric, you're paying six. Wouldn't that be just amazing? And it also piss a lot of people off. They wouldn't let that. They wouldn't let that, that technology out. I'll tell you, um, being here, there's uh, there are a lot of engineers, believe it or not, a lot of very smart people, I said, uh, but a lot of these people are engineers, and they're showing examples of places around the world that are connected to these, you know, sort of free energy source systems, and, and it is very, very possible. Uh, other governments are helping to make this happen in other countries. And I do believe there's a concerted effort because that's, again, it's a lot of money that all these coal and oil folks aren't going to get. There's a huge, uh, the, 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 the business model, the same with even the record companies. I know it's, it's sort of a stretch to compare it, but no, when not. MP3s came out, I mean, what did they do? They fought it tooth and nail because they had a business model that they didn't want to change. And so they sued seven-year-old girls, you know, because they downloaded a Metallica track or something. Yeah, uh, they, because, uh, you know, it was a, a freshman girl. They, shoot, they, they sued freshman girls uh, because the current business model was good enough. And heaven forbid, new technology alters their business model. Got to sue it out of existence. You got to patent it. You got to buy it up and lock it away so people don't have access to it. Holy shit. Well, yep. uh, that's about it. Yeah. Yeah, that's why uh, fossil fuels aren't going away anytime soon. I, I totally agree. It's a bit of a pipe dream. Um, that's all I got on UFOs and technology. I don't know if Trump's going to release it. I don't. I, this is what we've been reading. All this kind of weird stuff that Trump's going to change the world. He's going he's gonna to release alien technology. He's going to make everything better. I don't know. And I don't know why Alex Jones is talking about this. Like this, It really is alien technology that they're talking about here. Well, if there's any time to release it for Trump, you should do it now since that special prosecutor is going to put it. Yeah. You know what? You're right. Time's now, dude. Release the uh, the teleporters and give me my enterprise. All right. Give me a lightsaber, Trump. And I'll, I'll look the other way and all the Russia stuff. Thanks. Um. All right. Columbia, you got anything? <laughs> uh. Yeah. Do you want to take a break? Well, do you want to play um, that Pastor Manning clip and then we can take a break?